Hey all, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now going to talk security, two big issues, two big moves by the president and the presidency uh, in the past few hours. The first one is the controversial issue on the tenor of the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, who we've been talking the past few days, should he retire or not? What's the legality of this very important issue? And we see here that the president, he has extended his tenor for another three months. And they're saying the reason is for them to have enough time to find a replacement. Also, the president, he has nominated uh, the service chiefs who was just sacked or who was who just retired, you know, as non-career ambassadors. Joining us to discuss this is Okechu Kungwanguma. He is the executive director, rule of law and accountability advocacy center. Rulak. Good morning, Sam. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. My pleasure to be here this morning. Yeah. Now, many uh, people, many uh, analysts would argue that this move basically breaks the law because the president himself signed the Police Act 2020 and it states that you know a police IG should serve for four years but even though he's not served up to four years that same police act specifies that you're not supposed to stay in office beyond 35 years of service and uh, the, pre the IGP extended, or basically his tenor for 35 years, elapsed February 1st, 2021. So many would argue that the president is essentially breaking the law he signed. What do you think about that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it is very evident that uh, the president who um, signed the Police Act in 2020, September 2020, is the one turning around to, you know, um, um, carry out an act that is in conflict with that act. The Office of the Inspector General of Police, going by the current police act, is a, a one-time term of four years. And uh, the um, public service rule requires that every public servant Every public public officer um, would would serve up to sixty years or 30, sixty years of age or thirty five years in service, whichever one comes first. By February one, twenty twenty one, retired IGP IGP Adadamu was supposed to have left office. I uh, ought to have honorably honorably left, but we we saw him still sitting tight in office, and the president. Uh, endorses that illegality by extending his tenure mm -hmm. contrary to the the police act that he signed. This is a bad example in in leadership. We think that the president should lead by example and not to lead the way in breaking the law. It was, it was a clear case of illegality and okay. has to be re re reversed. Uh, Mr. Wanguma, what what, what uh, is the likely implication of this? Um, would you interpret this that, you know, maybe the presidency wasn't aware of what the police act says or um, they are just, you know, good enough reasons why they had to go, you know, of course, um, above the police act. Um, the reason and the excuse that was given is that the president needs these three months to be able to, you know, select a, a, a replacement. Um, and so, yes, the, the police act was signed uh, 2020. So would you say that, you know, maybe they're not aware of what that act says? I don't think it's um, a case of not being aware of what the law says, but I think it's, mm -hmm. it's simply a case of uh, the government not caring about the rule of law. It is consistent with the style of, you know, the president. If you go by the, his track record, um, I mean, he, 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 if the president has respect for public opinion, uh, prior to the dates of February 1, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of opinion leaders, experts on these issues have begun to call on the president to convene the police council. And by the way, um, the process of appointment of the Inspector General of Police is not the sole prerogative of the president. It is the, the duty of the police council. The police council ought to have met, and as you know, the police council is comprises of the president as the chairman, the governor of each state of the federation, the chairman of the police uh, service commission, 
and the Special Judicial Police. This council ought to have sat. And the po Police Act makes it mandatory that the police council must sit whenever there is vacancy or for, in the office of the Special Judicial Police to consider and advise the president, and then the president will appoint and then submit the name of the person appointed to the Senate for, for confirmation. So we had all the time, had all the time to convene the police council. And I'm also surprised that the governors of the states who are members of the police council are quiet over this. They are abdicating their responsibility, their role as members of the council. In fact, the police council has to sit not just on issues of appointment of the Supreme Court, but also to address the state of insecurity. And as you know, Nigeria has been on a state of emergency with regards to security. So there has been reasons why the council should sit in, a, apart from appointment of this president. Of so it's clear that the president has no respect for the law, he has no respect for the due, due process, he has no respect for public opinion, which made it clear to him that he needed to have taken steps before now would, to ensure that there is no vacancy. What would you but say? On, under the... Yeah, apologies. I, I just go on with what would you say is responsible, likely responsible for the silence across board uh, from the police council, from um, others uh, um, that are meant to make up that uh, uh, council, and of course the National Assembly also? Well, you know that uh, actions such as this, uh, when the government keeps silent or does nothing, in, in on occasions when they ought to do something, it leaves room for speculations. And a, a lot of people believe, and of course we know that in the past, um, the, 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 you know, uh, government has always had other considerations other than merit, competence, qualification, in appointment of successive IDPs. So it is possible that the president is taking time to select who will suit him, not because of the person's qualification, but because of other considerations that are not in line with what the, the, the law says. So I think it is all about politics, uh, all about politics. And of course, talking about National Assembly and other others, I, you remember how many times the National Assembly passed resolutions asking the president to remove the service chiefs, and the president ignored that. So the president has no respect for any public opinion, has no respect for other arms of government, has no respect for the law. He does what he likes. So what is happening is that president is simply taking his time to do these things the way he likes and how, how he, he, he likes it. Mm. And that is it's not good for our democracy. Mm. All right. You, you mentioned earlier something I was going to uh, bring forward, talking about how, according to the Constitution, the president should not single-handedly appoint or dismiss any IGP. That's a decision he should take in concert with the security, the police, uh, the Nigeria Police Council, that's all the 36 states governors, the, uh, the president himself, the IGP, and others constituting about 40 members of the Nigeria Police Council. But it seems he took this decision alone. He didn't act in concert with other people he should. So would you say that was an undemocratic act, first of all? And secondly, many analysts would cite the Biden case where he basically named the members of his cabinet a long time before his inauguration. But it seems here in Nigeria, the presidency leaves such important decisions up until the last minute. Why do you think we do so? Well, if you um, recall, when the president was, when President Buhari was elected in 2015, it took him six clear months, in spite of public demand that he, he constitutes his cabinet. It took him six months before he constituted his cabinet. And um, when, when he was re-elected for the second term, oh, the same thing happened. It took three months. And the, the excuse he gave was that he needed to carefully select those that will, you know, fit into the bill. But at the end of the day, majority of those he reappointed were the same old person. So, this president is slow in acting, I think, uh, whatever it is, he, he acts as like someone who is not prepared for governance. So clearly, he, 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 he slows things down, and this is not good for the, 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 the progress and right. development of this country. Coming to the silence of the governors, I think it's simply an a, a abdication, a, a, abdication of the responsibility. This is a moment when the governors ought to have, you know, stamped their feet and insist because it is within their powers under the law to ensure that they take part in the process of appointment, but not ensuring that that happens. Everybody leaving the president to do as he likes 
is, I mean, it shows okay. that apparently people okay. need to be woken up to their responsibilities. All right. Uh, woken hopefully, up hopefully their, before their, their slum, but people don't seem to be concerned about the security implication of what has happened. All right. Hopefully, before the end of uh, the uh, conversation this morning, we will be able to talk about what damage this, you know, can likely do to. Uh, our constitution and to you know the respect of the rule of law in Nigeria. Would like to say good morning to Ambassador Roy Okidevie. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. I want you to you know step in and uh, start your thoughts with the uh, the idea of making ex service chiefs or the nomination of the ex service chiefs as non career ambassadors. Uh, the reactions to that have not been very pleasant across uh, social media and uh, most of the comments that I've seen. But let's get to your thoughts. Do you, you know, find anything wrong with this? Well, um, thank you for the opportunity. You know, one thing we need to understand is that if people don't lay their beds very well, they find it difficult to have a wonderful night rest. If you know all we have been saying on Plus TV Africa and so many news media, we have been begging these starving chiefs to put their acts together concerning the welfare of veterans. I assure you that there is no welfare for veterans. So many retired army generals, not, not uh, the other ranks, the rank and file. So many retired army generals are looking for means to cater for their family right now, are looking for shelter, are looking for mental and other health challenges, solutions that they be devil with now. So these guys have seen that there is no way to go out and have the comfort of a proper veterans package that a responsible country it's supposed to offer. So what you have now is people in service trying to make a better way for themselves when they leave. How many generals that will be retired because they were not left to go on time? Are those generals also going to be made uh, non-active uh, non, uh, um, um, ambassadors? If you don't give everyone the same treatment, then you are selective, then you are biased. And I ask a question, what is the duration of this position? And I ask another question, is the EFCC and the ICPC, are they allowed to interrogate the wealth and the financial transactions of this set of people by virtue of this appointment, are we not laying another bad precedent? Everybody seems to have forgiven the presidency for the elongated stay by virtue of the guise of fighting terrorism. Now that they are going, we are happy the new set of people are coming in. We are begging that the new set of people should be allowed to run a legitimate tenure and also leave. Now you are right. taking another wrong foot. You remember that the, the wife of the president some time back said that the presidency has been hijacked. So many of the things that we are seeing right now are just portraying the fact that people at the hands of affairs don't know the long-term effect of some of the things that they do. This is an abuse of the military. This is an abuse of democracy. This is an abuse on the Nigerian people. All right, Ambassador Roy, I have this question for you. Uh, Mr. Nwagoba, please hold on. I'll come back to you in just a minute. But Ambassador, let's get your thoughts on this. This political appointment as a non-career ambassador that the president has nominated you know, the service chiefs for, shouldn't it be based on merit? Because now it's seeming like it's based as a, a, a going to be like a compensation for them. Well, um, this is the sin compensation. I'm sure there are on sin compensation. But if you want to compensate someone for a good job, it should be something that should encourage others. Compensation, medals, uh, awards, 
are supposed to be things that are encouraging to other persons that should hold that position or to attract other people to hold such position. So if you are compensating them with this, what about other generals that fought with them? What about other officers, colonels, that are also retired right now, that fought with them, that made them to even sit on that seat and dish out others that were carried out? What about the soldiers that died? What about their families? What are you going to do? How can you be selective in compensation? Compensation has not been properly defined if it is what was used in this aspect. So I, I refuse to agree, and I still maintain the fact that the veteran package is not attractive enough. That is why this set of people have set another precedent that people should continue to compensate themselves even when right. they have not done what deserves it. Back to uh, Mr. Wanguma. Um, we would like your thoughts also on this. Uh, the argument might be that the presidency has seen that they, you know, have served, you know, well enough. They have uh, given their all to providing security for the country and thought it would be wise to, in quote, compensate them by making them non-career ambassadors. Uh, so quickly share your thoughts on that. And also, what role are they meant to play in this uh, position? When I received the news of the president's recommendation of the uh, uh, services for non-career ambassadors with shock, shock because uh, first of all, these were people who were considered by many Nigerians as having failed in their duties uh, in terms of uh, the fight against insurgency. Uh, people considered them to have been incompetent and uh, which prompted the white outcry why the public you know outcry and demand for their removal of course you saw how long it took the president to hit that public demand and so by doing this president is simply will simply portray himself as 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 a uh, um rewarding incompetence rewarding failure but i mean that is on the, on the one hand on the other hand it is also su suspicious because it seems to me that there is something that these people know that the president thinks he, he needs to keep them happy. These are people who, as you know, are subjects of investigation before the International Criminal Court because of their alleged involvement in human rights atrocities in the, in the course of the fight against insurgency in, in the Northeast. So this president will not cease to continue to shock Nigerians with some of the actions he, 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 he takes. And he does not seem to care about public opinion. He doesn't care about what people think about what he does. The man is simply endangering our democracy. M Mr. Nwanguma, Mr. Nwanguma, you We've been talking about this ICC investigation. We see the PDP, you know, they've been asking the ICC to probe Nigeria's service chiefs, you know, like you mentioned, for crimes against humanity. And uh, this whole talk about nominating the service chiefs for, you know, a diplomatic appointment. We see Falano here at the front page of the Nigerian Tribune here saying uh, uh, ambassadorial appointments can't starve of probe. And we're seeing here other groups saying the Senate should reject it. The PDP here also saying it's a plot to avert the ICC investigation. Do you think so? Because we know that diplomats have what you call immunity. And uh, if there's any probe to be done you know, into them, if they, if they should be probed in future, the diplomatic immunity covers them. Do you, do you see any, any relation between this? Until the president uh, you know, provides the rationale for this, this shocking decision he, he takes, we are left with no choice but to speculate. And for me, I think that the president is probably trying to shield them, shield them. But of course, that will not uh, fly. And I, I join those who are making the calls to call on the National Assembly to decline the president's request to, 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 to confirm their nomination mm -hmm. as non-career ambassadors. They do not, there's no reason for them to be appointed. There are other people who are competent, who are more comp who are competent and qualified to be made ambassadors, and not these men who are considered as failures. 
Okay, and um, um, Ambassador Roy, I think you could also speak uh, on that before we move back to talking about the uh, uh, police IG. Uh, so quickly also speak on that, you know, the idea of uh, granting them diplomatic immunity. Um, would you also agree with that narrative? Well, um, you know, in Nigeria now, we, our Ministry of Justice have been moved to the presidency. And um, the voice of our National Assembly is, um, is relevant to issues that um, mostly are not uh, masses oriented. So I don't know what the judiciary is going to interpret on that, but um, also we know so many people that are not non-career ambassadors that have been arrested or invited by the EFCC, the ICPC, until date, no media, no communication about the case, and one administrator has come and gone. And so we don't know what the non-career ambassador is interpreted by law against being investigated. Because in Nigeria, the, the presidency is the law. So when the presidency steps on it, maybe the highest you can see is to step to out of court and then make some reform to the government. And that is what we see all the time. So I, I don't have any legitimate um, comments to make concerning the opportunity of government to investigate what they do and if there is immunity from the non-career ambassador rule. All right. You, you've um, a lot of times on this platform spoken about the welfare of uh, ex-service uh, men and you know, maybe also the police. Um, the inspector general of police was meant to have retired on the 1st of February. Um, the presidency has decided to extend his tenure for another three months uh, before a replacement is picked. Um, do, do you, you know, see you know, that that was a great move or maybe a, a wise decision uh, to ensure that um, a replacement steps in that will be able to continue the good work that IGP Mohamed Adamu has been doing? Um, for the IGP, I will repeat myself what I've been saying over time. I like the way he started. It was professional, it was non-self-aggrandizing, and it was very, very directed at coping and attacking crime. But um, it was truncated, and that was my fear, that these guys should not begin to play to the gallery with the tune of music of the political cabal. And that was achieved even during that end situation. And the creation of the new um, police outfit to take over from the South. All of those things just truncated most of the good work he had done. You know, and right now, there is this um, insult on the office of the police service commission is the police trying to tell us too that uh, what is happening in the military is also happening in the police why will you extend for three months you can imagine three months what do you want to achieve in three months that you have not achieved over the years and what closure do you want to do if you have not prepared yourself, when will you serve the notification of handing over? When did you last sit back to calculate your time in office to identify that within these months I will be due to hand over? And the next person that is supposed to come on board, is it not the, the hierarchy designates? that should be given that seat, and especially when the person deserves it by performance and appraisal. So what is the three months for? So you will now see by my observation that that three months is to watch the body language of the, the country against the appointment of the service chief as non-career ambassadors. So as the IG is coming out also, you can also designate him 
non-career ambassador. So they are just, everybody is just seeing the new type of videos we are watching every day, the new type of comedy our country is playing before the world and the global atmosphere. Hmm. Um, Ambassador, now there's a lawyer, Ambassador, uh, I beg your pardon, Maxwell Opara. He's now dragged uh, the IGP to court. He also joined uh, the Attorney General of Police, President Muhammadu Buhari, Minister of Justice, Nigerian Police Council to court, you know, asking the court to restrain the IGP from parading himself, you know, in that position, saying his channel has expired. So would you stand with him then? I, I would prefer to stand with the IG. You see, Nigeria now, it, we have gotten to a stage where people will look at what history will say. The families of uh, late General Sani Abacha, how do you think they feel in the society? The families of so many people that have truncated the due process system in our country. I, if I'm the IG, I will immediately terminate my appointment. I will request to humbly decline any elongation. I will request to humbly request a fast and quick transition to the office of the new IG. As an IG, what do you gain to go through all of these processes to call the hands of the judiciary? If they take this thing to court, no matter who is making the suit, I assure you that the presidency will intimidate it. Once it is the presidency's wish, that is what we'll get by current observation, by current appraisal of our judicial system. The judicial system cannot truncate what the presidency needs. And the National Assembly that we are looking at I don't know what other meetings happen apart from the ones we see happening on TV. Okay. So I prefer to rest my case on that matter. All right. Dr. Um, Mr. Nwaguma, what do you think about this? Your, your thoughts also on uh, you know, the lawyer taking this matter to court? I think that is uh, a right step in the right, in the right direction. Um, we, we need to go to court to test the legality of this action of the president and the continued stay of the IG in office when his time has expired and in, in contravention of what both the police act and the, the public service rules say. So it is right. So let us hope that the, the judiciary will, will do justice and make a pronouncement that will settle this matter once and for all. Whether the president will uh, adhere to the whatever the judiciary says or not. And we know that in the past, he has, he has always been reluctant to comply with, 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 the, you know, with the law. We will be left to sin, and it will also be left for history to record him. All right. Um, final question. Um, I think this will go to both. Um, if, if you can quickly speak on this in 30 seconds each. Uh, the persons that have been nominated now as uh, non career ambassadors, um, people would always question you the role really of ambassadors and you know how effective they are with uh, diplomatic relations. So we've seen how uh, Nigeria has fared with regards to diplomatic relations in the last uh, few years. Um, and so do you you know in any way think that these persons might you know be great ambassadors you know and of course will represent Nigeria diplomatically um, in, a, in a good way? I'm, I'm starting with Mr. Wanjuba with that uh, Wanguma, I beg your pardon. They, they are, they, they are track re, their track record in their previous service clearly gives you an idea of what they, their, 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 their competence is. And the fact that they have, uh, you know, um, that they, they have a dot in their, in their record, we should have also met, told the president that they shouldn't have tried appointing them in, in the first place. It, it is an act, act that portrays this country in a very bad light. All right. I don't uh, expect any support from them. Ambassador Roy Okideve, um, also quickly respond to that. OK, well, I know that the role of an ambassador, whether career or non-career, is to boost the image of whatever organization, society. I know that the role of an ambassador is to 
creates enabling environment for discourse with international bodies, persons of interest, organizations of interest, to make things available and better for the community they stand for. Now, who, who do you think we listen to? Which, which international community do you think we listen to our current outgoing service teams concerning making the military a better military, concerning making the lives of veterans a better one, something that you truncated? How do you think they will, they will position themselves to communicate a discourse upon improving the welfare of the serving uh, military personnel or procurement of weaponry or improving the fighting capacity of the military. I think those should be their concern. Who will they go and negotiate with, like bandits or terrorism, to create an opportunity to dispel that insecurity situation? I don't think they have gained that trust to be able to have a discussing uh, platform. Right. So I think they Thank are just much. going to be comatose and they are just going to be enjoying the wealth that have been assigned to them. Security consultant, Ambassador Roy Okidev. Uh, thank you very much for thank your time you. and for speaking with us this morning. Also, uh, Okechuku Wangumba, Executive Director, uh, Rule of Law and Accountability Advocacy Center. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we are going straight into talking about female genital mutilation, uh, where we are with that in Nigeria and what must be done to put an end to that here on The Breakfast. <laughs>